Well, hello everyone. Welcome back. I have another case for you again. I'm Scott Glazier, one of the MGH ED Ultrasound Fellows. And this is a case I had the other day. I was in fast track and I had an 87 year old woman, very healthy, uh, walks at baseline, who tripped on the ice, fell, and landed on her shoulder. So she came in and her main complaint was pain. We got an x-ray given. I wanted to make sure that she didn't fracture her shoulder, but she had a clear deformity. And when we got the x-ray, it was clear that she had an anterior dislocation. Um, no real argument here. No fracture. It was just a simple dislocation. So I decided um, with my PA, Janelle, who is fantastic, we both um, decided to do an ultrasound for both analgesia and then uh, post-reduction. And so what you have here is the left side. This is the good side. And you have a clip here, and I'll try to show it better to you. This is the humerus right here, and this is the scapula. And I had the patient externally rotate so you can see the humerus moving more easily on the image. We then move to the right side, which is the affected side, and you can see there's this large gap here between the scapula and the humeral head below. With ultrasound, we then decide to do a hematoma block, um, and as opposed to doing it blind. You can tell when we first started that our needle was a little not on axis. If we continued to go, we would have hit the bone, hit the scapula out there, and not gotten to the joint space. We then redirected and were able to get closer to the joint space. Um, Janelle, who did the block, did aspirate blood, and then once blood was aspirated, we then injected um, some analgesia, some lidocaine, into the space. We did 20 cc's um, into the space. This is afterwards. You can tell that some of the fluid got out um, and it is extravasating. But nevertheless, patient did feel a little better, um, and she was enough to relax for us to reduce. And this is the post-reduction. On the other side, again, you see the scapula and the humeral head, and they're better aligned. So a successful procedure. I then signed out to the uh, next attending, saying, hey, we just we didn't sedate the patient. She just got a little oxycodone by mouth. We did the ultrasound guided hematoma block, reduce the shoulder, and she just needs her post-reduction films. Um, I didn't realize that when we put in the x-ray, it was uh, the tech um, misinterpreted that we wanted three views when we just wanted to make sure that the AP, that the shoulder was intact. And so I was having this debate with one of my other colleagues, well, do you need another x-ray, yes or no? I just want to make sure that we didn't create a fracture or do any harm by doing the reduction, whereas even though we had on ultrasound that we confirmed the placement, um, I just wanted to make sure. Well, it turns out that um, I probably did cause the patient some harm. She's 87. She doesn't need any protection from radiation, but the problem was the radiology tech did a Y view and re-dislocated the shoulder. So what happened was that the patient then, after I left, was with someone who uh, wasn't as good with ultrasound, and so they um, tried to reduce the shoulder, had some difficulties. Um, they then had to sedate the person because she's 87, uh, was a little over-sedated and had to stay overnight just because I decided to get a post-reduction shoulder. So when you do your ultrasound-guided hematoma blocks and then reduce the shoulders, you can then use ultrasound to confirm your placement one more time. And then this way you don't have to send your patient outside of your department um, to get a post-reduction x-ray and to put them in any danger of being re-dislocated. So food for thought, think about it. I uh, hope this case was helpful. It was definitely interesting to me, and I'll think about changing my practice again post-reduction uh, x-rays of the shoulder. Any questions, any feedback, uh, please get back to me, get back to us. We look forward to hearing from you. Take care.